lower back pain can really stop you in your tracks, right? Now, there's actually a life and death reason that lower back pain is the most common pain we humans experience, and this reason might surprise you. In this video, you're gonna learn what causes low back pain, why it often means that one or more of your glutes or lower abdominal muscles may not actually be firing or contracting on demand, and what you have to do to fix all of this for good. Now, the most important thing to know is that your low back is rarely the cause of that low back pain, and you won't even need to touch your low back to get rid of it. Now, some of you already know this because you've been hanging out with me a while, but if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name is Alicia Celeste, and I'm the founder of Kinetics, a partner method of fascia release that involves stepping on people, and I'm really passionate about helping you learn to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence. You're going to find lots of videos here about self fascia release, the mind body connection, healing trauma in the body, nervous system rewiring, and how to be a free human being, body, soul, and spirit. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you get notified when new videos of mine go out. So here's the thing, your lower back pain is unique to you. And I am all about finding that root cause. Since no two people have low back pain for exactly the same reasons, in order to help you find the root cause of your pain so you can resolve it once and for all, I wanna ask you a few questions here up front. Have you ever fallen on your tailbone or your hip? Do you tend to lean on one leg a lot more than the other whenever you're standing around? I call it the sassy hip. Just try and be sassy on the other side. It actually feels really awkward. Do you always sit the same way? Do you drive a lot? Do you sit at a computer for work? Have you ever had abdominal surgery? Have you had children? Do you play any lopsided sports or activities like soccer, tennis, skiing, snowboarding, or do you tend to power off one leg more than the other while hiking, biking, running, or swimming? Have you ever seriously injured something in your lower body, like your foot, ankle, knee, or maybe you broke a leg? Were you neglected, abandoned, or abused as a child in any way that made you feel like it wasn't safe to be in your body? These questions contain important clues about why your low back is giving you that pain signal. So let me know in the comment section below which of these apply to you. I really want this channel to be a citizen scientist project and your comments just might help someone else have an aha or feel less alone. And together, we're gonna learn a lot about why pain happens and how to eliminate it for good. So if you answered yes to two or more of these questions, then chances are pretty high that you are in some kind of pelvic instability scenario. What does this mean, pelvic instability? Well, before I answer this, I wanna make sure you know about my online course called Solving Pelvic Instability. See, I don't have any sponsors on this channel, so this video is actually sponsored by me and this course. I open courses a few times per year to guide people through the process of self-healing at a root level. And lower back pain is the classic case of pelvic instability, which I will define in just a moment, but pelvic instability is actually the hidden root cause of most head to toe pain from plantar fasciitis to knee pain, hip pain, mid back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, and even things like tension headaches. So if you are experiencing any of these things, you are a good candidate for this course. It's a five week program that teaches you how to solve your own pain at that root level by taking your own injury history, learning to assess your gait, your posture, and your daily habits, You'll learn how to do fascia release safely and effectively, how to map your fascia to find imbalances, and then follow along with certain muscle activation exercises for your core to create pelvic stability and get out of pain for good. You'll also learn how to rewire your nervous system and take a look at your subconscious pain psychology in the bonus course called Lose Your Fear of Pain. So if you like the idea of being supported through the healing process, then definitely check out the link in the description box below because registration is only open through July 28th. So what is pelvic instability and what does this have to do with lower back pain? Well, your pelvis is made up of both hips, your pubic bone, your sacrum, and everything in between. When one or both of your hips start to tilt or shift out of alignment, it can twist or torque your spine. Now, similarly, whenever there's an impact trauma to your sacrum, your hip or your lower back, like falling on your tailbone, 
you might experience a twisting and torquing of your hips and spine. And the primary cause of lower back pain, physiologically, meaning not the habits, sports, or life events I just listed, but the way your body is structured, that primary physical cause tends to be fascial imbalances in your legs, specifically your quads, quad hip flexors, IT bands, and adductors. Fascia, also called connective tissue, is the most abundant tissue in the human body. It wraps every nerve ending, every muscle fibril, every muscle fiber, the muscle bundle, and the muscle group. It comes out of all of that musculature and turns into your tendons and your ligaments, which then attaches to your bones or attaches muscle to muscle. Your organs are wrapped in fascia as well as your blood vessels and your bones. So healthy fascia has a high water content. It's fluid, flexible, elastic, and able to move with you and your body. It acts like a shock absorber through impact sports, allowing you to practically bounce off the ground. But when it gets unhealthy, fascia can actually stick to itself in knots or adhesions. It can become brittle, dry, or dense, and then more prone to tearing. But it's really these big fascial adhesions and the dense shortened fascia that causes the issues that we're talking about today. So just by the very nature of being lopsided as human beings, along with your specific injury and trauma history and your daily habits is what really creates these big imbalances and the buildup of fascial adhesions in your legs that can cause all of this. So these fascial adhesions are what pull the hips into, uh, pull them forward into anterior pelvic tilt or sway back posture or backwards into posterior pelvic tilt in the case of flat back posture. But there is one really overlooked contributor to lower back pain that I want you to be aware of, and that is whether or not one or more of your core muscles has stopped firing. So if a muscle is inhibited, meaning it can't fire, it means that your brain or nervous system will not allow it to contract on demand. Now your core muscles include your glutes, your pelvic floor, lower abdominals, and your lower back muscles. It's really uncommon to have lower back muscles stop firing. And the most common scenario is that one or both of your gluteus medius or gluteus maximus muscles has stopped firing or your lower abdominals. If you're really unlucky, like I was for a long time, then maybe it's check, check, check to all of these. Now, thankfully, I've actually never been prone to lower back pain. My pains have historically all been my left knee, my left shoulder, my left mid back, my gut, and my jaw. So we all have our unique areas of vulnerability, right? Depending on our life experiences so far. All right, so why do these muscles stop firing though? That's the question, right? And this brings us to that life or death reason that low back pain is so common. Now, I'm about to get it a little sciency on you here, but hang with me because this information will help you understand what pain actually is, which should make it feel less scary. All right, so your spine houses your central nervous system inside the spinal cord. This is the super highway of communication between your body and your brain. And if this communication was ever cut off, you would die instantly. If it becomes compromised, you end up with a body that is compromised and can't function at 100%. Your body and brain will prioritize monitoring your spine above all other areas in the body. And the number one place where dysfunction affects the entire spine is in the lower back. So whatever happens in the lower back affects the whole spine. And this is why some people experience lower back pain that is so excruciating. It's because your body is saying, whoa, there's a major threat to the spinal cord here. I need you to stop moving until you figure out what's going on and fix it, please. So that pain signal is designed to just stop you, right? Get your attention, get you to pay attention to your body and change something so that your spine isn't in danger anymore. The reasons your spine might be in danger have to do with this thing called pelvic instability. If your pelvis isn't stable, your spine isn't stable. Pelvic instability can cause your lower back muscles to become dense and shortened in the case of anterior pelvic tilt. Nerves can get pinched like the sciatic nerve or in the case of flat back posture, the lower back actually loses its curve, which puts the spine in a compromising position. Now your body will do everything it can to protect you and prevent all of this. And the first thing it will usually do is recruit your gluteus medius muscle to hip stability duty by commanding it to contract 
24-7. The gluteus medius is the most versatile and important hip muscle, and its primary job is to stabilize your hip through standing, walking, lunging, squatting, running, planking, downward dogging, just about everything we do as humans. But once it gets recruited to pelvic stability duty, the gluteus medius muscle can no longer contract and relax like it normally would. It is now inhibited. And your brain won't let that muscle do its normal job until the hip is stable again, until your pelvis is stable. Now, countless people, myself included, have been told they have lazy or weak glutes or more commonly probably that you have weak abdominals and the advice is always to strengthen those muscles but you can't strengthen an inhibited muscle and the more you try the more you compensate often with the exact muscles that are causing all of this in the first place so for example whenever i used to do core work my lower back muscles would kick in and shorten and work really hard. My neck muscles would really kick in and my quad hip flexors would even get involved. Basically, I was using just about every muscle in my body except my lower abdominals. So before you go activate and strengthen these muscles, you have to take care of the reasons they've become inhibited in the first place. And this means taking care of the soft tissue imbalances that are pulling one or both hips out of alignment and taking care of any scar tissue from falling injuries, like falling on your tailbone or surgeries to your low back or abdominals. All right, let's recap so you know exactly what you have to do to solve lower back pain of any type for good. Step one, you'll want to map your fascia, the fascia in your quads, quad hip flexors, IT bands, adductors, and hamstrings to figure out if there are any imbalances left to right and front to back because those imbalances are what is pulling your pelvis out of alignment by shifting your hips. So you're releasing fascia in all these areas and taking notes about which of these areas has the most adhesions, the biggest adhesions, and those areas of density. And doing this should actually start helping your back feel better too. But to reverse the pattern for good, you wanna figure out, are you in anterior pelvic tilt? And if so, what's causing that? Are you in flat back posture? And if so, what's causing that? Is one of your hips out of alignment causing your spine to shift or torque? And if so, what's causing that? Step number two is to figure out if your glutes, gluteus medius or gluteus maximus, or your lower abdominal muscles aren't firing. Now, some chiropractors can do muscle activation tests to help you figure this out, but a thorough injury history, postural assessment, and then monitoring yourself trying to do certain exercises like those lower abdominal core exercises can help you figure this out on your own. Because if you obviously compensate like I did while trying to do core work, for example, then it's pretty clear that those lower abdominal muscles aren't firing. Step number three is to release those key areas of your fascia that you found when you did the mapping to balance yourself out and reverse those hip imbalances or misalignments. So that means just doing your tighter or more adhesed or more dense sides more until your hips are aligned. Step number four, if you do have muscles that are not firing, you're gonna wanna get them activating and then strong again because this combined with fascia release is what creates pelvic stability. Now, step number five involves assessing your mind-body connection because the pelvis and lower back can hold a lot of unhealed traumas related to not feeling safe and feeling the need to protect ourselves. So it's important to address any unhealed traumas or subconscious patterns that could be keeping you stuck and in pain. Trauma lives in the body and it will make itself known when you do something like fascia release because you'll probably activate some of those nervous system protection mechanisms. As you move through the self-healing process, you might notice limiting beliefs, skepticism, doubt, and fear coming up. And this is totally normal. But taking a holistic mind-body approach will offer you the best chance of lasting freedom and feeling really good in your body. So you can use the resources on this channel to do a lot of the above. Or if you have the means and you'd like strategic support and really easy access to all of the resources you need to implement everything I just talked about, then I invite you to join me and the other 2021 students for this year's session of Solving Pelvic Instability. Either way, I hope you had an aha moment or two watching this video. And if you did, 
If you had an aha moment, then I'd love for you to share that below. I love hearing from you and your comments help me stay motivated and inspired to keep making videos like this one here on YouTube. Don't forget to like this video and make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.